Taylor Yard is owned by the Norfolk Southern but is serviced by it and two smaller roads, the Delaware Lackawanna and the Reading and Northern. The DL conducts its business at the north end of the yard, that business being the dropping off of empty cars and picking up loaded ones while the Reading and Northern works the south end of Taylor. DL trains to Taylor Yard usually operate under the DL3 train symbol while the yard job operates as the YJPI. The anomaly to this mix is the RNN's train PISB which works its Kaiser Valley Industrial Track. The KV branch is part of the old Delaware, Lackawanna and Western that also operated Taylor Yard. Like most of the railroad infrastructure in northeastern Pennsylvania, it became a part of the Conrail system on April 1, 1976. In the early 1980s, Conrail sold Taylor Yard along with the former Lackawanna line between Taylor and Binghamton, New York to the Delaware and Hudson who used it to downgrade and eventually abandon its original Penn Division main line between Scranton and Nineveh, New York. Somewhere along the way, I'm guessing during the Canadian Pacific's days, the Kaiser Valley branch west of the Y was sold off to the Reading and Northern who operates it to this day. Notice where the locomotives are. Right now, they're still on Norfolk Southern tracks track 17 to be specific. Once the locomotives cross over the switch, they will then be on the Reading and Northern's KV branch. I bring this to mind as a segue for an upcoming video series that goes into more detail about how control points, junctions, and interlockings work. For now, most railroad lines in North America are separated by a junction of one sort or another. This is train PISB and it's starting its day working the KV branch. Did you notice the many cryogenic reefers and western boxcars in the train's manifest? Those will be switched out at the massive Kane warehouse. The cars are shown on the Kane spur having just been cut off from the train. The locomotives along with the jumbo covered hoppers have moved a short ways north up the line to the Scranton runaround and switchback tracks where it switches to large customers. Looking at this map, we can see the track layout of the KV branch. Our train will proceed to the runaround track where the locomotives will cut away from the hoppers, run around them, connect back to them from the other end and pull them into the switchback track so it can switch today's customer. Today's customer is Mitsubishi Chemical. Before that, a company called Quadrant Ep occupied the plant. The other customer is Azek Building Products.
Like most industrial switching, the operation is a slow and lethargic one with a lot of back and forth. What I like the most about the switching operations on the KV branch is that it's usually done with big EMD power. Most notably, the legendary SD40-2s and the occasional SD50s. You should remember those engines. The next day we're back along the KV branch as today's PISB makes their way to the Luzerne Street crossing. Today's manifest consists of all hoppers for the AZEC company save for Lone Cryogenic Reefer on the tail.
before catching up with the PISB, we get something of a look at the loading bays of the warehouse where these cars deliver their spirits. And there's the car dropped off a little while ago. One interesting thing to note about the switching operations here is that the empty cars don't usually get released until after 2 p.m. This is also something to keep in mind if you're ever considering rail fanning the KV branch. Up at our destination, the silos of Azek rise high above the surroundings. Below at ground level is an interesting looking industry that may pique the curiosity of any modelers in the audience. I don't know what this business does, but it looks like it would make a good produce distributor. Looking south, the switchback spur stretches just beyond the nearest tree in the background. The brown building to the left of the track is the county transit headquarters and is home base for all of the city buses in Scranton. Our train PISB, today shoving instead of pulling, rounds the curve of the switchback track and moves on to the spur. Note that the conductor does not dismount to throw the switch. The engineer will do it this time and once the train moves forward to the customer's spur, the conductor will take over the bending of the iron. 